Hey, what's up everyone? Quick video here. I just want to show you something interesting. Uh, this is my eyes machine. I recently did a tube swap on this one. I was really excited. I found an old TV, a wood grain one. I actually had it sitting around for a while, but I didn't know what kind of monitor it was compatible with. And when I measured out the resistance on the yoke, you know, it took the, the little measurements for the vertical and horizontal, it matched up almost exactly for the 4600 that's in my eyes machine. So I thought, great, this is going to be a drop-in replacement, no problem, it's going to be as easy as like a K7000. Uh, no, I ended up, um, I swapped it out, but let me show you, this is, um, this is how it looked originally after I swapped it out. And um, let me just back up, the reason why I was going to swap out this tube is because I also put Crafty Max Bit Kit in here. And so there's other games that are playing on because the monitor that was in here was very heavily burned with the eyes game. And so you don't even notice it when the game's playing, when the game's on, it's very, very hidden and kind of like uh, Miss Pac-Man in that sense. So I could live with it. It wasn't a problem at all. But the problem is, is that when, um, when you go out of here, When you're playing any, um, well, some of the maze games are okay, but if you're playing something like, uh, let's see here, um, Frogger or Anteater, something with a solid color on the screen, it, it looks terrible because you can see that eyes burn. So this was a great candidate for swapping the tube out. And so I was really excited because I found this compatible tube and I put it in here and I ended up with all kinds of horizontal geometry issues, mostly just bowing. And let me, uh, let me demonstrate that here because there's a nice set of tools that I can use to show that. Let me go video and let's go ah, there, crosshatch. So I'm not sure how well this is going to turn out, but you can see down here, uh, hopefully, there's some bowing that goes just pretty much like this. And then also it kind of mirrors it at the top here. And with this crosshatch where it's really condensed, it's not as noticeable to see. But like on ones that are stretched out a lot more, you can see it better. But the bowing is kind of gradual throughout. So it gets worse and worse as you get to the edges of the picture. Uh, kind of the same way up to the top. So you got this, this, this bowing. And I wasn't expecting that because the yolks were so or they seem so identical but again you know people always say that it's not all about the resistance there's you know the stuff with the windings and blah 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 you know technical jargon uh, I'm not going to talk about that here but what I want to show you is something cool that I, I did to fix this and it's something I, I don't know if I read about it or someone told me or I'd heard about it somewhere but it involves using the magnet and uh, let me actually go around here I'll show you guys this. Bear with me. I need to turn on the light here. Okay, let's go up and there we go. You see that, um, oh, let's see here. If I can point at it. See that there's that cap right there. And then behind it is that transformer that, um, that you see like the, the windings around it, that little copper thing with the little um, black metal bar on top. I don't know if I'm describing it well, but um, right in the, the back center there, that transformer is the horizontal, the, basically the pin cushion transformer. And if you put a magnet on there, uh, like I did, it will completely straighten out that Boeing. Now, I don't know the technical reason for why that is, or how that works, or you know why it works, period, but it does. And uh, it, it did a tremendous job in my situation. And so I'm going to demonstrate that here. Now, I don't know if this is, uh, is this, this is a constant, like if this would work in every monitor or have the same effect or work the same for you guys, but it definitely worked in this situation. So I just want to show you, this is going to be uh, really cool. Let me, let me set my camera up on, on the tripod here so that you guys don't get sick. And I'm going to set up another camera on the front so you can see this as I put this magnet on there, what happens to the picture. So let me get set up here and let's do that. Okay, so I've got my magnet. Hopefully I don't bump the camera here and I can finesse it in with the game on. And hopefully you guys can also see the picture and can make out what's going on here. But watch this. Hopefully this comes out on my camera fine. But 
Uh, here we go. I've got the magnet. I'm just going to finesse it right up in here. All right, that's, that's on there. And voila. Pretty neat, huh? Like, it's just, to me, it's just magic. Again, I don't know the technical reason why this works, or I'm not even going to question it. It does. <laughs> but uh, hopefully this actually helps you guys, too. I, I want to see if this will work on other monitors as well, you know, like Geo7s, things like that. But, um, but yeah, what's cool about this is also it doesn't affect the convergence. It doesn't throw the convergence out of whack because... I will sometimes use magnets to fix geometry on, on some tubes, just like the, the sand hills in my punch out. And the problem is um, when you put magnets on the bell of the tube, on the tube itself of the monitor, it will throw the convergence out of whack. And it's very tough uh, to dial that back in, if at all. So this is nice because it affects the geometry, but it doesn't affect the convergence. So it makes things a lot simpler and saves a lot of time and headaches. But uh, yeah, it's just magic. I don't know like, it, if I just got lucky or what, but pretty neat, huh? Anyhow, short video. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, take care. Let's, let's do it again here. Before. After. Before, after.